Okay, so welcome to tonight's dinner chat. You already know where we were. We go to the same place like every fucking night. Anyway, um, so tonight, I was. I think I might make a longer video or a better video about this topic. But the thing I was thinking about today, at least after I made my coffee, I thought about this. So how did we get to this like underdeveloped urban black male? And I was trying to put it in terms of, like, media. So we'd have to start at, like, Baby Boy. So Baby Boy is this, like, movie with Tyrese Gibson. And um, (laughs) basically in Baby Boy, he, like, he's, like, living at home with his mother. And he's got, like, a girlfriend. And then she, like, the girlfriend has a job. I don't think he does have a job. And it also, then it kind of trickles into like Friday. And I think Hood's Prim Cinema has a really good depiction of like Friday. (laughs) Hood's Prim Cinema is so fucking funny. If you are not watching Hood's Prim Cinema, I really don't know what you're doing with your fucking life. This shit is so funny. He basically like breaks down all the Hood movies. (laughs) Like he's commentary. Shout out to Gabby from Robin Hood for putting me on to Hood's Prim Cinema because I feel like that's the best subscription I have ever joined. That shit has brought me so many hours of laughter. It's the type of laughter where, like, you will start to cry. Anyway, so, yeah, maybe go watch any of the, like, Hood's Prim Cinema takes on baby boy or fucking lean on me like I feel like some of the dudes they live with their parents but they had a very they had like a rough educational experience basically like the one described in (laughs) his prim cinema like lean on me or I I did a take and sent too that was about like the girl version of that even though I feel like Lauren Hill's character in sister act two wasn't even really that rough because she like she definitely overcame a lot of adversity not the point though um Okay, so then you have these dudes, basically, who, like, they don't really go to college, and then they also live with their parents, and then, so there's, like, a couple of them who do go to college, and I feel like that experience we've also detailed in, like, Drumline with Nick Cannon, but then we have, like, actual Nick Cannon in real life, who is basically, like, this, like, baby hoarder, baby daddy, he's, like, a super baby daddy, which is so fucking funny, like... I mean, I don't know. It's like I want to agree with Michael Knowles, who's like, at least he's not aborting his kids. But at the same time, it's like there's no way that you could like possibly take care of all those kids. So then, and then it's like so many black women are trying to, it's like, so, okay. So let's say that you make it out of all of that and you finally like get your life together. So you've got like a living space that you, where you're not living with someone else, you're living on your own, you just have like a job and you're like paying your bills. Okay, so now you're at, like, step one of adulting, because that's definitely step one. That's not, like, step ten or anything. So then you're at, like, step one. Um, And then you look around, and you're like, okay, I can finally start to date. You're like, who else is there to date? So if you're, like, a black woman asking this question, the pool of black dudes is so small. So then you're like, okay, let me, like, look at other populations of people. But then you realize that, like, most people are dating in their own racial group, so you're competing with, like, all these women from other racial, like, if you're, like, okay, I'm gonna date white guys, well, white guys, most of them are dating white girls, and you're, now you're this black girl who's competing with, like, white girls for white guys, and then that's a whole thing, you're just like, uh, for me, I don't have the energy for that anymore, and it's like that with all the races, then you get to a point where you're, like, okay, like, I don't really want to compete with anybody at all, so I'm just going to be single. That's where I am right now, right? Like, because I, I, I don't have the emotional capacity to date black men, um, and I don't have the competitive bone in my body to compete with white women, so that just I'm just going to, like, live my life for me and have my meals every night. But so... What I do like to do is like think about other black women's experiences who are different than mine. And I love doing this through music videos. This is literally why Centify was such an important project for me. 
go explore Scentify if you want to. Um, also, this soda pop was so fucking good. Oh my god, this soda pop was so good. Um, anyway, so let's go back for a second. Um, we loved Scentify. You should watch Scentify. Oh, so I was thinking about music videos. So I saw this Kevin Gates music video. Um, and it's basically like, I think Kevin Gates' current album, his entire present album is about, well, I haven't listened to it, I don't know, but I just saw this one song where he's talking about how he like loves, he, he like loves fucking this woman. And um, that, like, I don't know how to put this. Like, I feel like maybe his whole social media presence right now is about how, I feel like Kevin Gates is dating Carisha or I feel like he should date Carisha. If, Okay, how can I say this? If Diddy is does not want to date Carisha, I think that Kevin Gates should really go date Carisha because I really feel like they are like the male and female companion versions of each other and they complement each other very, very well in terms of like their character. But it really does feel like for some reason, Diddy really does like Carisha. Now, I can't understand why he seems to... Well, now he's, he has a whole baby with somebody else, so... I think he should let Carisha be free and let her go date Kevin Gates, who does seem to be single and would actually like love Carisha down. And that's what he's talking about in this music video. And I just want to say, like, there really are some guys who are really like Kevin Gates. This is not all guys. This is not most guys. It's like a very small percentage of dudes who really do like feel this way about some woman it is not most guys though (laughs) especially not most guys in the black community i feel like like 50 percent of the dudes in the black community are especially in the black american community are undercover homosexuals i'll put that in the bible like i don't know what it is but they're like all prison gays in like i don't know bible I've seen it for myself, and it's just so strange. Like, it is okay to be a homosexual person. Like, I'm not knocking you for be that for being that. I, like, I saw if y'all if there's an interview with this dude, like Jason Lee, who is literally a gay male, and he is talking about his relationship with Melissa Ford, who's a video vixen. Now. Th- this is how you know there's something like really wrong with the black community. Like, well, how is a gay male up here talking about a relationship that he had with a video vixen? In the black community where there's like all of these rappers who are talking about how much they love video vixens and putting them in the... That's the thing where like some black men just don't make no sense at all. Like at least white dudes will be like, I love white women. I love them so much. They're always here. They're so great. And you'll like literally see them with like some white woman doing all the things that they said that they like. It'll be like that in every community except the black community. The black community will be like, I like Doritos. I love Doritos. They'll make like 60 songs. Doritos, Doritos, Doritos. And then they'll be like, in real life, they'll be like, actually, I just hate Doritos so much. Doritos are so awful. And you'll be like, I don't, why did you just make 17 songs about how much you love Doritos? And they'll be like, I did it for TikTok. (laughs) You'll be like, somebody shoot me. Somebody shoot me right now. This doesn't even make any sense. I'm so confused. Anyway. So moving forward with this. So in the recommendation box of videos that came up after that was this like Brandy video. It was a music video for one of her songs called Borderline. Now Borderline is this music video. I saw this two years ago and I was so fucking confused. So it's Brandy in a mental institution. She is literally in like, she's like in one of those those gowns where you're like strapped People are are dragging her in somewhere. But what she's talking about is this, like, all these emotions that she feels in the relationship. So it's basically giving the idea that for her to be emotional, she has to be in a mental institution. So I feel like we've heard this exact same story. Like, Latoya Luckett had a video that was like, 
10 years ago or something where she was, it was called Torn. And she was talking about all this shit that she feels about, you know, not being appreciated. Um, Watch that video. Or this group Cherish has a music video where they talk about how they don't feel appreciated. Right? It's like, I'm feeling really unappreciated. I feel like so many... And then there's another one um, where Maya has a music video where she's talking about... It's called Fallen. And the big idea here is she really likes this guy. um, And... I think she's, like, friends with the guy, or maybe she's not friends with the guy, but she, like, sees the guy in the community a lot, and she's really interested in him, but she doesn't have, like, a relationship with him yet, so she's just kind of, like, giving him kind of, like, very cute eye, and then she, like, keeps going, um, and she's just kind of, like, writing journal articles about him. And all these things, but she doesn't actually have a relationship with him yet. Um, All of it is just, it's so interesting. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just really interesting. But then, like, going back to real life, like, all of those stories are fascinating. Like, I'm really happy that we have these music videos to tell stories about some people who are in relationships but I just think it's really important the reason I'm making this video is because like I am still out in the real world like today (laughs) okay not like the fake world like this is really dinner that I had like really tonight and it was yummy and like you know I'm still gonna go to work and I'm still gonna like interact with people in society and I'm like still gonna feel real feelings in the real world and have like real relationships and like try to improve the awful relationship I have with my family members like none of that shit is changed just because I made this one video about this like partial experience you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's something that for some reason gets like overlooked. Also, this soda is so good. It's so good. Um, no, but seriously, like you can have feelings about some music video or someone else's story or some gossip that you heard. And all of that is like great. But at the end of the day, it's just so important for you to like look at yourself and analyze your own situation And just make sure that, like, the shit that's happening in your own personal life is, like, being taken care of. You know what I mean? That, like, you are accomplishing, like, your own goals. That, like, you are are seriously moving forward in your own life. Like, that is super important. And I don't know how we, like, skip over that sometimes. Like, how and why do we do that? Like, why do we abstract our own, like, lived experiences and struggles and challenges to, like, hide behind social media like social media I think is cool like anything but I I feel like the purpose of the influencer is to enable people to understand that they are real in the world you know what I mean like Like, while all that stuff is happening with celebrities, like, you don't have to be a celebrity to live your life. Like, you have a real life, and you can live your real life. And it doesn't have to look like a red carpet, but, you know, it is that idea of Hannah Montana, right? Where, like, she was a real girl in the real world, but she was also, like, a celebrity, So she kind of like turned it on and off. But the real parts of her life were still real. And like those don't go away. And like those are really important. And like those are actually like the most important parts. 
I don't know. That's why I don't know. I feel like more than anything else, instead of watching scripted television shows and movies, I would just much rather watch YouTube because it's like real people's videos. Even though, I mean, I will say it takes a long time to like edit if you're actually that person who's editing. Like, I don't really edit. Um... Actually, yeah, I don't edit at all. And then also, like, I just function on my own time, if that's not clear. I I just do shit, like, when I want to, as I want to, how I want to. Um, and I'm not that person who, like, waits for other people's approval or opinion to, like, go be something and do something because I... Yeah. I think that might be just a little bit different from yeah I don't know from what other people in the past have like done whatever